Hello, everybody. I'm Becky from Northampton Film Festival. Um, if you have been watching live today, I think this is my third um, uh, meet the filmmaker kind of chat with people that have been shortlisted for Northampton Film Festival 2023. Um, we've done animation and we've done documentary and now we're definitely on some drama. Um, so uh, before I um, bring in who we're speaking to. Um, if you are interested in finding out uh, more about what is showing at Northampton Film Festival, um, you can have a look up at our listing site, northamptonfilmfestival.eventive.org. Um, if you're not watching live, the film festival might have passed, but still, that's not a reason not to look it up and get in touch with us um, to find out about 2024. Um, if you are watching live, though, if you want to ask any comments in the, um, uh, sorry, ask any questions in the comments section, um, do put them in, and if they're vaguely relevant, um, I'll put them to Jess. Um, so without further ado, um, there's often quite a lot of to do, um, I'm going to bring in our filmmaker for today, um, who is Jess Alsop, who is the director of Fixed, as well as the micro short Nobody Knows. But hi, Jess, how are you? Hello, I'm great, thanks. How's yourself? Yeah, good. Um, like, I, like I was saying a little bit before, I've done a few of these now, so <laughs> if I lose track of yeah, what's going on, just, just yeah, carry on pitching the film. Um, <laughs> but yeah. so, um, well, do you want to tell us actually a little bit about Fixed? What What is the story? Yeah, absolutely. So Fixed is a, a contained thriller, as we say. Um, it's about a backstreet bookie, a lovable rogue called Daz Clements, and he organises bare-knuckle boxing fights in, like, a cellar. Uh, but he's down on his luck, and he's been fixing the fights. So he's been skimming off money. He gets found out by the gangsters who run the racket, and then he gets locked up by them. Uh, he's injured, and he has to try to escape and survive the night. Amazing. And I'm, I'm a bit scared to ask, but where did the idea come from? <laughs> well, it was written by a writer called Ryan Davis. Uh, and between us, we just sat down and we'd, we'd done a short together. And we just sort of said, we've got to do a movie. We want to do it in the next like year. We don't want to wait like three years, five years. So we were coming up with things that were topical, even though it's not strictly topical, uh, things that were filmable on a budget in one location, pretty much. So we just started this idea of um, a kid, actually, initially, like a young lad in a gang who'd been stabbed and he had to sort of hide out and survive. But what we actually found through developing the idea was that it was more uh, interesting for it to be like a guy who was middle-aged with problems and kids and family and a past and a history. So these are all the things he's got to try and fix in the film, like the, the relationships is ruined and the wreckage of his life, really. Well, yeah, it's interesting, actually. I was speaking to um, director Mikey Murray um, yesterday about the feature film Mindset that we're also showing. Um, and he was saying, you know, he kind of started with a, well, what have I got? <laughs> you know, I want to make something with not very much budget. I'm sat in a house. OK, so I'm going to make it in a house. You know, and giving yourself, um, yeah, those parameters going, actually, I want to make it quickly. I want it to be one location, whatever else. You know, it really helps you get things moving. It does, yeah, because what you find, I think, with low-budget filmmaking, independent filmmaking, if you don't do that, is that you're having these good ideas and you're writing, but then you look back at it and you go, ah, oh, but we could never do that because we need A, B and C and it would cost this much and, oh, if only we could get that and only if we, if only we knew somebody who could do this. So... We it was really restrictive. It's a really restrictive process, and you have to be really disciplined to just say no. We're not going to do that because we can't afford this equipment or this rig, or we can't have that many locations. So you have to be very um, strict with with your idea development. But that's what we did. So similar sort of thing, really, and uh, thankfully it worked. 
Yeah, and then tell us a little bit about your your short film. Um, it's a very short film. Um, it's not the sh yeah. it's actually not the shortest we're showing because we're showing okay. two <laughs> we're showing two films that are one minute long. And whereas I believe yours is two minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So nobody knows is um, a film that uh, again I didn't write this one. It was written by Steve Gill, a friend of mine. Uh, and we just wanted to do something, you know, we both were working on various things, but we hadn't done something just creative and really for ourselves for a while. So we just came up with something that we could shoot in a day. Uh, and that's what we did. And it's um, a conversation between two friends, one of whom is Terminal Ill. So it's quite a sort of uh, gritty you know, heavy drama, very realistic. Uh, but I think a lot of people will, you know, see a lot of uh, reflections of situations that they're familiar with or people that they know in there. So, yeah, we just sort of did it, really. Absolutely. And and, and what's, um, I'm going to ask what's up next for you again. Is it, do you think it's something where you'll kind of go, actually, I'm itching to make something again. Let's give ourselves some parameters, a day, whatever. Uh, and will come out or have you got something that you've been working on for a little while uh, a bit of both really yeah I mean definitely I'm going to do a short I think at the end of this month which is just going to be again a one day shoot and just to uh, keep moving forward but um, yeah I've been developing with writers uh, a couple of different scripts again working with Ryan who wrote Fix uh, and we've got one particular script in development that we've developed over probably about 18 months now, which is a horror. Uh, and that would be, you know, our next project. But again, it's kind of trying to go one bigger and better. So you're always waiting for that funding and, you know, the right opportunities, the right doors to open. But, you know, like you say, I, even though we're doing that, I think it's a mistake to only do that because you can be waiting forever. So just working on shorts and got a couple of sort of more micro budget feature ideas on the go as well. well and tell us a little bit about like you, how, you know, at what point in life did you go, yeah, I want to be a film director. That's what I love doing. Yeah. Um, I don't know, really. I often think about this, like, when, when did the penny sort of drop? Um, I remember being a teenager and there was, like, a, a Scorsese, De Niro season on TV, and that's when I really started watching films, I think, and thinking, oh, right, OK, that one's a bit different, and I want to see what he's doing there as, like, an actor who's really putting in a performance and then that opened up a lot of other doors really more experimental films foreign films uh really got into sort of hong kong new wave and italian neorealism and it just i just i suppose i was in my early 20s when i really thought <clears throat> yeah this could be something i could do and I started writing a lot. But then I'd quickly become frustrated because I just wanted to make it. And I found like you were going, look, I've got a script, here's a script. But I quickly learned that it was much more powerful to say, look, I've made this film. People really listened a lot more when you did that and took you more seriously. So, yeah, I mean, I'm into mostly sort of dramas, um, Although I've written and made comedies as well. Uh, we're working on a horror. So I don't really have one. I'm not very narrow in terms of genres that I'm interested in and that I gravitate towards, but it's more on the dramatic sort of side of things. Um, I can't imagine creating like a, like a high budget sci-fi or something, but. There again, you never know, do you? you never well, know what yeah. If the offer comes in, <laughs> say yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Amazing. And and I mean, um, 
so obviously fixed has, has, has been viewed by other people around the world and stuff. Have you had kind of much a response, um, feedback and stuff from people about how it's received? And is there kind of something that you really hope that people leaving the cinema go, oh, yeah, that's that's what I liked about that or that's what it made me feel? Yeah, I mean, it's incredible, really, because we just wanted to make the best film that we could make and really to get it seen. Because as you're well aware, you know, it's criminal the amount of independent films that never ever get a distribution deal. So for my first movie to do that was like an achievement in of itself. So uh, I was pleased about that, uh, that, that we got it out there given that it's like a low-budget film made in Birmingham. There's hardly any films ever come out of Birmingham or the Midlands, for that matter. Um, but, yeah, I just think, you know, it, obviously it's a genre film. It is a thriller. It's gritty and so on. But the character, particularly, I think there's a real kind of reality, like a resonance at the core of it, you know, is a guy who's fallen on hard times, you know, and he's struggling and he's skint and he's desperate. And, you know, I think everybody can relate to that in one way, shape or form or another at some point in their life. So I hope that they'll connect with the character. I mean, he won the award last year for the Midlands movies, best actor in a lead role. That's for Nick Clark, the guy who plays Daz. And he, he is brilliant, you know. He carries the whole, whole film. He's in every single scene. He does a lot of work on his own. So you've really got to put in a shift, you know, to sustain the interest from the audience there and really captivate them. And I think he really does. So hopefully people will just be like, flipping heck, like a little bit stunned. I think that's how I'd like them to feel at the end. And a little bit of uh, thought provoking as as well as to, you know, who these people are and could it actually happen in real life? Absolutely. And you mentioned um, Birmingham. Obviously, we met um, through your work yeah. with the University of Northampton. Yeah. Um, and just as, as, you know, the people thinking about you know, trying to get over that kind of, oh, I've written stuff, but I don't know what to do, I don't know how to make something. What, what's your kind of bit of advice to young filmmakers of the Midlands who, yeah, want, want to get something made, but maybe don't quite know where to start? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you what was told to me. Uh, we have a friend of ours, a director, Carl Tibbetts, who's doing really well. Um, and I said, look, okay, I've got you now. When I ask you a question, how do, I, how do I get to where you are? And this was before Fixed. And he said, well, it really started for me when I made my first feature. And I was like, yeah, thinking there was something more he was going to say, but there wasn't. <laughs> that was the advice. So you just have to do it. You just have to keep going. You know, the world unfortunately, is not waiting for your next film. You've just got to keep going, whether it's shorts, whether it's a longer piece, whether it's a music video, you've got to keep creating. Um, and don't wait too long. You know, if you want to make a movie, you really just have to do it, even if it's, you know, scraping together the meagerest of budgets. Um there's another film out of Birmingham called Cosmos, uh, and they, I think they made it for like 5,000 quid or something, and that got distributed as well and has done quite well. So it can be done, you know, can be done, but you just got to get the right people around you with the right mindset and just don't listen to the naysayers, you know, because there's loads of them. Yeah, definitely. Um, totally on that let's leave it on that note because there are some ignore them um so yeah thank you very much um, for joining me um jez and um of people interested in getting in watching your films obviously fixed was showing on sunday 28th of may at six o'clock in the film house and then we've got nobody knows um with some other films on wednesday 31st of may at 5 45 yeah thank you very much thank you
Oh, I just slightly cut him off there. But <laughs> never mind. If you want to hear from more, more from Jez or see more of his work, you have to come to the film festival. Um, uh, so yes, uh, um, uh, program can be found at northamptonfilmfestival.ventive.org where you can also book um, and you can watch uh, the trailer for Jess's films and everyone else's films. Um, so yeah, we hope to see some of you at Northampton Film Festival.